Now, before finishing off this video on this proposition, I want to go over another important implication that happens when the value of an unlevered firm equals the value of a levered firm. Now, way back when, we mentioned that the value of anything in finance is always equal to the present value of all of that asset's future cash flows. So, continuing on with this general principle, what's the value of any firm going to be? Well, it's going to be the present value of all of its future cash flows, of all the firm's future cash flows. The question is, what's a good representation of the cash flows of a firm? Well, it's going to be earnings before interest and taxes on an after-tax basis. And notice how we didn't subtract the interest here. Right, so it's just the earnings before interest and taxes and then we take it on an after tax basis. And you may be asking yourself, why aren't you subtracting interest? Because then we would just get to the net income on the income statement. So why aren't we using net income? Well, net income, because we're subtracting that interest to get to net income, we would sort of be ignoring the bondholders. Net income is more so a representation of what the shareholders are getting. But since we're looking at the firm as a whole, we have to include in our perspective the bondholders and the shareholders. So taking that earnings before interest and taxes, keeping that interest in there, and then taking that figure on an after-tax basis gives us a good representation for the cash flows of any firm. Now, whenever we're looking at firms, we assume that they're going to be in business for a very long time and they're going to continue earning this cash flow here for a very long time, more specifically in perpetuity. And if you remember, what's the present value of a perpetuity? Well, it's just the simple formula, the cash flow over the discount rate. So applying this formula here, the cash flow of a firm is going to be this earnings before interest and taxes times 1 minus t. We assume that's going to happen forever, so to present value all of those future cash flows to time zero, we would just discount them by some kind of discount rate R. So we basically took the perpetuity formula and applied it to find the value of a firm by discounting all of its future cash flows. Now notice we got pretty specific with representing this cash flow of a firm with this expression, earnings before interest and taxes times one minus T. But this discount rate is still very general. We just kept it as R here, just arbitrarily, because we know that's what the present value of a perpetuity formula is. But can we get a little bit more specific? What can we represent the discount rate of any firm by? What would be a good representation? Well, a good representation would be how much it costs the firm to raise capital. And on average, the cost of that is going to be represented by the weighted average cost of capital, the WAC. So instead of having R, we're now going to discount these cash flows of the firm by its weighted average cost of capital, and that will give us the value of any firm. And this formula here that I circled is huge, huge in this chapter, super useful. So make sure you take a note of it. And it's funny because this formula, a lot of times isn't even mentioned when this chapter is taught. I don't think even your textbook explicitly mentions it, but it is super useful. It's gonna make our lives a lot easier when we are doing questions or checking questions. It's always going to hold whether you're dealing with no taxes like we are in this case or even when we are dealing with taxes. This is always going to hold. So you can think of this as like your secret weapon in this chapter. So taking that formula, let's try to apply it specifically to this video. Well, in this video, we're dealing with a case where we're not paying any taxes. So this is the general formula. You want to write down this general formula, but in this specific case, we don't have to worry about this one minus T. We'll come back to that in future videos. So when you're dealing with no taxes, 
the firm value is always equal to the earnings before interest and taxes divided by the firm's weighted average cost of capital. Now I mentioned that this is going to give us some kind of implication, a second implication. Well, what's the implication going to be? Well, if you think about it, the firm value is always going to be the same, right? Because the value of an unlevered firm is equal to the value of a levered firm in a no, no tax case. So this is going to be constant. The earnings before interest and taxes, if you think about it, that's going to be constant as well. Because those assets are constant, they're still going to be producing us the same income, no matter what kind of firm or no matter what capital structure a firm has. So this part here is going to be constant. So the firm value is constant, the earnings before interest and taxes is constant, and I promise you that this formula will always hold. What does that mean? Well, that means that the weighted average cost of capital is constant. And that is the second implication for this proposition. And we'll further expand on that in future videos and future examples. But for now, just write that down as an implication. Weighted average cost of capital is constant for any firm. So the weighted average cost of capital of an unlevered firm is the same as the weighted average cost of capital of a levered firm whenever you're dealing with no taxes. So that's another implication of M&M proposition. One. And this here is the summary of this video and basically everything you need to know for M&M Proposition 1 in the no tax case. Now what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to go over M&M Proposition 2 with the no tax case. And M&M Proposition 2 is going to deal a little bit more with the equity portion of a firm. So in terms of equity, we already know that the share price is constant. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the risk is constant for an unlevered firm and a levered firm. And that's what we're going to expand on in Proposition 2.